You know, milk paint has been around for centuries. Its use has been found on artifacts of antiquity all the way back to the ancient Egyptians over 3,000 years ago. But despite its longevity, it's actually not a period appropriate finish for 18th and 19th century furniture. Instead, furniture from these periods were typically finished with an oil-based paint made up of linseed oil and natural pigments with white lead added for increased opacity. Today we know the health risks of paint containing lead, so it's not used anymore for obvious reasons. Um, but the problem is most paints available today, like our um, latex acrylics and our oil-based paints that you might find in the hardware store, are really sort of bland and dead and just very, very monotone, um, very even, and they, they give wood and they give furniture sort of a, a very cold, dead, bland feeling, like they've been coated in vinyl, because for the most part they have. Um, milk paint, on the other hand, is a little bit different. It really provides a finish that is somewhat um, uneven and gives sort of a mottled look and really gives uh, furniture makers today a, a way to replicate the look of historical lead-containing paints without the health risks associated with those paints. Milk paint is incredibly easy to use which makes it a great alternative and a great finish for today's furniture making. Um, it comes as a powder that you mix yourself with water. There are two manufacturers of traditional milk paint that I'm aware of. Um, the first is the Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company. Um, I'm familiar with their product. This is the, the type of milk paint that I've used most often. Uh, there's another company called the Real Milk Paint Company that also makes a traditional powdered milk paint. I don't have any personal experience with their product, but I do uh, know other folks who have used it. So uh, the process that I'm going to show you today can reliably be used with both of these powdered milk paint products. Now there's another product on the market that's fairly recent um, made by General Finishes um, that they also call a milk paint. Um, but really that product is just a, a milk paint in name only. Um, really, it's a sort of a thinned down latex acrylic paint, and it's not a true milk paint. It comes pre-mixed in a can, um, but it's really not a true milk paint. Um, you really get the same result from just going to the hardware store and buying a quart of paint and thinning it down a little bit to the consistency of milk paint. So uh, I'm not gonna be talking about that paint today because again, it's not a true milk paint. The one thing to keep in mind with milk paint, um, as I said before, you mix it yourself, um, but because it is made from natural ingredients, it will spoil. So it's best to mix it up in small batches. One package makes up a pint of paint. If you need to make more than that, it's best to mix it up in separate batches um, as you need it, if you, or you can actually make uh, mix up less. Um, and if you're gonna mix up less, I recommend weighing out the powder um, and you, the man, according to the manufacturer, you mix equal parts of powder and water to make up the paint. To mix up the paint, you'll need a container that can hold about 20 to 24 ounces of liquid. When mixed, one package of milk paint will make up about a pint or 16 fluid ounces of liquid paint. The additional headspace in the container is to allow for agitation when mixing the paint and for frothing that occurs during the mixing process. Just empty the contents of the packet into the container, add water, and shake to mix. While the froth of the paint is settling, it's a good time to prep the piece for painting. Because this is a water-based paint that you're mixing with water yourself, it's a good idea to raise the grain first, otherwise the water-based paint may end up raising the grain and then you don't really want to have to sand it down after it's already been painted. So I just take a paper towel or a sponge and wipe everything down thoroughly with water. You don't want it soaking dripping wet, but you do want it wet enough so that the wood absorbs the water and raises the grain. And once everything's dry, I just take some 220 grit sandpaper and knock down that raised grain just lightly over the whole piece. 
and then remove the dust with uh, a bench brush or a vacuum or a few blasts of compressed air. Now one thing you'll notice about milk paint is that it's not going to draw um, like a latex paint that you might use to paint your house would. So you're not going to be able to you know, put some on and really draw out a long line. It doesn't really work like that. It's, uh, it's a different type of consistency than, um, than a latex type paint. This paint is actually going to absorb into the wood rather than sit on top of it like a latex would. So you just sort of have to, you know, slap it on and kind of spread it around um, as best you can in a spot um, and then move on. You want to move fairly quickly because it it does dry pretty fast being water-based. It dries by evaporation um, and you'll notice the f that the paint's going to get duller as it dries um, and it's going to be dead flat when it's fully dry. Um, it, it has absolutely no sheen to it whatsoever. I mean, it's a, it's a dead flat finish. But we'll take care of that in uh, subsequent steps. Right now, I'm just interested in getting the paint applied as quickly as possible. Um, don't worry if you have brush fibers that come out. Um, you can just, you know, wipe them. You can sort of flick them out of the paint with your your finger if they come out. Um, if you don't notice them until the paint's dry, not a big deal because once the paint once this paint is dry, those brush fibers are going to wipe right off since the the paint itself is sort of a a watery liquid that absorbs into the wood. The um, the paintbrush bristles that fall out um, will just wipe right off the surface after the paint's dry and you won't even know they were there. They won't leave a mark like they would in latex if you had to, you know, take them out and, and unembed them like cut them out. Um, I'm just using a, I'm using an, an artist brush. Um, it's a round brush with a tapered oval tip. Um, and the reason I like brushes like this is because they they can get into, they hold a lot of paint or uh, you know, glaze or dye or varnish or whatever it is that you're using. Um, and they can get into corners very easily. I think better than square chisel tip brushes um, and, and chisel cut sash type brushes. Um, this is a round brush. It's sold as a, I think it's called a sash brush. Um, it's for artists, um, but I find that it works really well for for painting and for finishing as well. Um, it's not an inexpensive brush and for milk paint really you can just use the inexpensive natural bristle chip brushes that you can find at Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that um, and they work really well. Um, and as I was saying you know you don't have to worry about the bristles fall out like they do in those cheap brushes because you're just going to be able to wipe them off when you're done. So I'm just going to continue on here finishing up this first coat um, and then once I finish this I'm going to let it dry for about an hour or so and what you're going to see is once it's dry the paint is going to take on sort of a chalky uh, appearance a chalky texture so once this is dry we'll come back and we'll talk about what to do next so you can see here that after the first coat the finish is a little bit streaky and blotchy and that's perfectly normal for milk paint you really have no need to panic here because we're going to take care of this with the second coat. But before we go ahead and put on a second coat, I just want to rub this surface down because the paint has sort of a grainy feel to it. Uh, it's, it's not so much raising the grain, it's just the, the nature of the paint is sort of rough textured. Um, so I'm just going to use a scotch bright pad. I'm using a gray pad, but you can use the maroon ones or you know whatever um, for up steel wool will work. And, uh, and we're just going to rub the whole thing down to sort of get rid of that grainy texture um, and smooth things out a little bit. You can skip this step if you uh, prefer the rougher, grainier texture. As I mentioned before, here's the really cool thing about 
loose bristles that come off in this paint when they're dry you can just sort of peel them off flick them out of the surface you'll see there's a little bit of line left there but when you rub it with that steel wool or your abrasive pad it just dissolves and goes away but once the paint is dry um, I apply a top coat this is sort of the final step that really brings the milk painted finish to life um, before putting any type of top coat on the paint's going to look dull somewhat mottled um, and uneven the top coat helps to even it all out darken the finish a little bit and it's really going to bring it to life um, i'm just using boil in seed oil um, but you can use a wiping varnish or uh, any other type of top coat as well but i think the oil really brings out the variation in coloring um, and i really like the way the oil goes on um, and as it soaks in as the oil itself soaks in it tends to darken the paint a little bit more and really give it a, a nice rich um, rich dark antique look that's very reminiscent of old um, lead containing oil paint so I just saturate a rag and, and really saturate the uh, the paint rub it in and let it soak in real good for about 10 minutes or so and you'll see that it'll start to really get much darker and uh, much more um, much more lively and it just really brings the 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 painted finish to life you'll start to see the grain again um, and it, it just really makes for a really nice finish I think um, and then after it's sat for you know 15 minutes half hour or so if there's any excess oil you can wipe that away um, and then let that dry so you can see here how wiping on that oil really tends to darken and deepen the finish and really bring out the grain again. The nice thing is that as this oil continues to absorb, it'll continue to darken the paint. The last thing I did was to give the whole thing a nice coat of paste wax and then I went ahead and reassembled the lid, gave everything a final wipe down and buffing. So you can see here how the oil and wax finish has really served to darken that paint up and bring the grain back out again. Really give the, uh, the color of the paint a lot of life.